Alright, so this is my review for the second season of Boys. And there will be spoilers, just to let you know. So please leave a like um, if you're going to most likely leave. And um, here we go. So what we, the summary of the last episode, what we got at was Homelander blew up a house with a baby and a woman in it with Homelander in it. Uh, then he woke up in front of a house that Homelander was brought him to. And uh, Becca came out and uh, a child. And that child turned out to be Homelander's son. So as that being said, this is where we get into the story. Um, we won't be able to cover it all. Obviously, we'll cover a lot. Um, things that I, I actually stand that stand up for me. Um, so Homelander in this, in the last one, he was a, a psychopath, you know, dickwad, I guess you'd say. He was way meaner in this. Um, he was way more violent as well. Um, there was this, this part where they're looking for a new recruit to replace Nantusa, the invisible guy. Um, and so this, the uh, secretary brought in this guy that is pretty much a knockoff of Daredevil. Um, there's also a guy in here when it comes to Marvel knockoffs, as a guy that's uh, like Hawkeye. Um, he has a small part in here. Uh, so this guy, but he goes up to him and it smacks him in the head. And he goes on the ground just bleeding and crying. It was just really brutal and it's like, wow. You know, he's he's definitely got a lot meaner. And you see this throughout the whole thing. And so there's this new girl that comes in, a new character, and she looks like she's in her 20s. Um, and she just acts like she's this stereotype of kids today. So she's walking in there, uh, oblivious to caring about anyone else, and uh, she's streaming on live. Um, and um, so I was thinking, oh, well, she's gonna be one of those annoying people in here, and even though they're probably making fun of her. And then there's a part where I started to like her. You know, she came more of a uh, lightened up and kind of showed more of who she was. And then she turned around on Starfire and pretty much a bitch. Um, but then there was way more to that. Um, so she goes uh, on this rampage of, with the others of trying to get this terrorist. Um, so she goes in this building of, uh, there was a whole bunch of black people. And so she just looks at these guys and she just randomly kills them uh, as she's trying to do that. And I thought nothing of it. I thought, well, this is going to be another Homelander, a female one, which is going to be a problem because they're already trying to, you know, get rid of uh, Fallbinder, which I don't know how they're going to do because he's like pretty much a Superman, so it's like he's not going to surrender to you. You know, he can get out of the, the prison if he wanted to at any time, or he can just go out and kill in the rampage. Um, so. She does that, and then when she gets to the uh, the terrorist, who is the is an Asian, she kills him. But then she says, calls him yellow, uh, not the, the whole sentence, but it, that if you don't know, that's a reference, an old racist slang towards Asian. So I was thinking that there was something up with that. I had a feeling, and then later, and then about you know some minutes later, they had a barn with Homelander painted on it, and he had a rebel flag as the cape. So I was thinking, oh, they're going with a different tone with this one, it's gonna be racial. I had no idea it was gonna go this way, and I actually loved the twist. So, another thing that happened later on to her story is apparently she's like 70 some years old. Um, she flat out, as a superhero in the 70s killed a, a brutally killed for no reason a black man um, and so you didn't I didn't know it was her and then the, the black lady who was a child at the time said that's her 
So I was a little bit puzzled, and I was thinking, oh, is she, like, way older than she is? Uh, apparently she is. And I thought that was the extent of it. I thought we were just having some sort of sinister type of, uh, you know, old racist superhero. No. It turned out there's the biggest um, plot twist in this was like so out of nowhere is that she's actually a Nazi who was born in 1919 and she was part of the Reich and um, the foundation of the founder foundation of uh, or the crater of um, Volt was her husband. And she's seen in pictures with um, Himmler uh, and Hitler and this other third guy. It's a piece of crap in history. It doesn't matter. So apparently, then you really then they start showing what her intentions are, and she starts talking like a white supremacist type of person, as you would expect. Uh, you know, the whole white uh, white people are in danger type of BS, and other colors are trying to you know you know you know the whole BS racist bull crap. Um, and so she tells Homelander this and he's already in love with her and there's like these violent, overly violent sex scenes between them, you know, throw them around and stuff. It's like, I won't get into detail, but it was just like violent as hell. It was just really hard. And then there's this part where an alleyway where she's it's really uncomfortable scene where she's seducing him why she's trying to why they're trying to apprehend this bank robber and they end up just killing him while they're doing it and then they have sex um it's kind of something you expect with the show it's kind of weird um and there's this other stuff in here that it's just like they throw other stuff that are obviously you know it's not if you actually you can tell, but they're not being very obvious with it. Um, and I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. But how they went about it is compared to like... It, they had they had this rally between them after they she, he found out. And how they did the shots and how they did the crowd and how they did the speeches. Came off like a Trump rally, kind of obvious. Um, again, going to get flack for that. Um, it is what it is. I'm just saying what it is. I'm not even political. Um, and then there was this kind of obvious cult in here throughout the thing around Deep. And um, I got a strong impression, and then I looked on Google just now, and they confirmed it, that they're making fun of Scientology. Which, they, it makes a lot of sense, honestly. Um, and so was that, and they're just uh, making fun of that. One of the highlights of this, though, is Black Noor in the first one didn't really get a whole lot of uh, screen time or, or action time. It was just being this uh, mute that was being awkward. He was doing that in this one well, and it was actually pretty funny. Um, I don't remember if it was funny in the first one. Um, but he got a whole lot more action in this for sure and I, I really loved it because I was actually disappointed in the first one because I wanted to see his character in full on view um, and they kind of ended it with something funny there was this really like the most laughable scene I've ever seen and then they had a, a come another one come up with it uh, first off, it was like, you know, Deep is in the first, is is this rapist, and then he eventually, for the first, I mean, like the last half of the first one, gets treated like shit, and uh, he does in this one too, and he's, he's more of a wimp still. Um, I have no sympathy for the guy, um, but there was this really cool part that I thought, oh wow, he, he, he changed it around, he's finally going to get some respect in the right. Because there was this really cool spot where all the guys were on the speedboat speeding away because the, all these sharks come. And you already knew it was deep. Um, so then he just rides up on this whale beside and, and then the look between him and uh, uh, Butcher was this, and from the music as well, was this intense. So he got in front of the boat and to his surprise, Butcher said, fuck it, and then ran right through it. Now, 
first, I, I kind of ironically figured he was going to do that as soon as I, I got a feeling as he did that. Because this is Butcher we're talking about, right? So he doesn't, he just rams right in the big ass whale. Uh, I was like a sperm was like freaking huge. Um, so it was just laughable because they're all coming out of that, you know, just guts and bloody. And so Huey's already at this point having a huge breakdown. So he's in there and he's just, he's just having this full on breakdown. Butcher goes into there and starts talking to him. And it's just hilarious because he's just there and so you got all the well around him because he's inside this well like Pinocchio and uh, Butcher makes a joke about that. That's what he does. And um, so he's doing that and all the, uh, the guts and stuff are just falling down randomly. And then you see the intestines and stuff coming out. It was just really gory, but it was funny as hell. Uh, and then um, Mother's Milk comes in and tries to convince them to get out. And um, so then they go on their way. There was also a part, because they make fun of, of uh, a, a ton of stuff, how they do this. They, so they kind of did that politically correct kind of thing where they appeal to certain minorities and feminists. So Volt did this as they do campaigns uh, and kind of media stuff. They got the three women who were the superheroes and you know, they kind of made this uh, female thing. And that's where the point where I thought uh, Stormfront was going to be a better character. I mean, she was a great character. That's not what I mean. I mean, she was going to be from what I originally thought her at first was this cringy person that they were making fun of. Uh, her and uh, Star Starlight, I thought, got along, and then they didn't. So apparently, she's a bitch. Um, not Starfire, Light. Not Starfire, but Light. Um, you know, and then they, they went back to that, but in a different way, where at the end, where Becca and Starlight and uh, I forgot the Wonder Woman lady we're all just kicking the crap out of uh, out, out of uh, Stormfront, and how they did the, the epic music and how they did it was it was just hilarious, uh, hands down really awesome. And then there were some jokes. Um, that's really I'm gonna go on that. Um, but there was a lot of different twists and turns. It was really well written. Uh, definitely a lot more. Th thicker um, content, uh, storyline. Uh, I really loved that Butcher's character got, ended up where he was. Uh, there was a part where you thought Homelander was going to take or slash kill um, uh, the son. Um, so Butcher took over because he promised the uh, Becca who, by the way, dies. Um, and I wasn't really necessarily a fan of it, but I kind of figured it was going to happen at certain state, at certain episode uh, later on. Um, kind of hitting at that, I guess, kind of the mo typical movie kind of thing. Um, but yeah, he, he, I thought, because the way he looked, I, and knowing him, he was going to kill uh, the kid. But it turned out he didn't, and he ended up loving, uh, saving the kid. Um, the, everything was great about this. I mean, I absolutely was it, it just really pumped up after this for the second, for a third season. The writers did a really good job of upping everything and giving more depth to uh, the characters and uh, more of the comedy. So I don't know exactly what position uh, Jeff Rogan has in here, but... He does have some sort of uh, uh, part to the, I guess, writing. I don't know anymore. Um, but let me know in the comments below, because I give this five out of five stars, obviously. Um, by the sound of it, you can tell. Yeah, please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this thing. What did you parts did you like? Um, yeah, I mean, it was a great movie, a uh, great TV show. And uh, everyone have a good day and love and uh, sub and uh, like. And I uh, love you all and subscribe.